Yeah. Hey guys, we have no camera today. There's battery malfunctions. We'll blame Stephanie. It's definitely my fault. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's the yeah, cold yeah. weather. It's cold. cold <laughs> and weather. my allergies. Like, my whole eyes. Are you not feeling good? This cedar is killing me. Oh, that sucks. Like, it's killing me. My eyes have been so itchy, and, like, when I sneeze, the roof of my mouth is itchy. Like, I don't know oh. how else to describe it. And so I've been taking Allegra and Advil cold and sinus, and the Advil cold and sinus has been good, like, to dry up yeah, yeah. what's going yeah, on in my nose. Yeah, up. But once that wears off, I can immediately tell when that wears off. But I don't have any Allegra, so my eyes are itchy right now. Um, you want to eat some... Oh, I've been eating the heck peel. out of some. I've been eating the heck out of some of those little mandarins. Those the are so peel. good. I eat the peel whenever I get like the peel yeah. clear right oh, now. Oh, but no so way. I was having crazy cedar issues. Yeah. The last three days have been different, and I bought something. <laughs> <laughs> the laugh makes me nervous. Oh my gosh. It's one hundred percent legal. So I mean, I can talk about it, right? Yeah. Um, it's Rick Simpson oil. It's CBD cannabinoids. So it's mm -hmm. marijuana without yeah. the marijuana that gets you high without the THC, uh -huh. right? And it's not anything you smoke. It's like, it's, it's so crazy. It's in this syringe. <laughs> it's nuts. <laughs> it's not a shot. You unscrew the cap. And it's like a little oil, right? Yeah. And you put it like in your mouth or on a spoon with coconut oil or just a spoon with itself. I have vegetarian capsules that I could put my essential oils with. Mm -hmm. um, put it on a scoop of peanut butter as long as it, it's like fish oil as long as it gets yeah. in there it's good right <laughs> um and the last three days cedar no issues what at, like sneezing nothing like no stuff really in this. and i was um i got overall the sneezing and the mm -hmm. the thing i couldn't get over was the congestion it was not going away and i was like oh it's cedar season that's what i'll deal with uh -huh. and the last three days nope Every, i've been using it i use it two times two to three times a day um the first day i used it twice Yesterday I used it three times. Today I've only used it once this morning. Mm. And I also feel a difference in my, like, anxiety, because I do have some anxiety issues. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, I'm very clear-headed with it. It's kind of very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get it? Um, that's fascinating. Uh, th there's a smoke shop, because that's the only place they sell yeah. it, or online. But um, I, the smoke shop right down the street from my house, oh, sure. the guy, he... He really knows what he's talking about. He's, he's, he gave me his sources, like, in the sense of where they're getting it from. And so he was very knowledgeable, and I felt good. It was only 50 bucks. And it's, dude, the syringe is so big. It's 1,000 milligrams. It's three days. I've only used, like, I mean, an eighth, two eighths of the, you know, I don't, I don't know how to really measure that. Yeah. Um, but two little lines. And Heather's used it once, I think, or twice, maybe. Hmm. But it's crazy. And it, Rick Simpson, a background on that is, He's the doctor who cured himself and 50, I think it was like 50 something, 30 to 50, 40, 60 patients um, of his, uh, of cancer. So like he was like the first, I guess, doctor to kind of pioneer it. And what they discovered was, cause logically you're like, take all the THC out cause that's what gets you high. That yeah. gives you that um, euphoric feeling and leave the CBDs in that has all the medicinal benefits cause mm -hmm. THC doesn't have any medicinal benefits. And what they discovered was the plant stopped working. It was like, nope, I need my THC to, for my CBDs to work. But what Rick Simpson figured out is you can actually manipulate the dosage con or concentration, again, um, crossbreeding, right, yeah. I guess, with the plants. Um, and then the process of, just like essential oils, um, steam distilling, cold pressing, all that stuff. Um, he's discovered or he figured out a way and they since sin then like made it even better you can lower the thc to where it's so low um your body you don't get you for it but yeah. your body still the cannabinoids go to use and we have cannabinoid receptors in our brain so these cbds it's like that lock and key effect yeah. it just kind of connects and boom and i was like whoa so i feel these last three days have been really really cool sleeping amazing um yeah it's just really cool i like it and uh, I've even seen it being used on dogs for seizures. I don't know if you've seen that. I've seen that, So yeah. I don't know if it's a Rick Simpson oil or if that's a different, you know, I'm sure there's different types because it is medicine. Uh -huh. um, or that's the way they're, I don't know if they're selling it as medicine. I guess a supplement, you could say, but it helps with inflammation. And I'm sure there's different strains and different potencies. He even said, he's like, I, but the one I got was 1,000. He says some are 3,000, so three times as strong as this one. Um, which, man, this one's working fine, so I don't yeah, need that one. And then he has one that's 6,000. 
So I guess if you have like, let's say rheumatoid arthritis, or you have like, because people, there's testimonies on, online saying that fibromyalgia, these yeah. crazy, mm -hmm. um, flare inflammation disease, right, inflammatory diseases, uh, this stuff really helps. So you obviously probably want the stronger dosage versus the, the weaker one. If you're just using it for anxiety or, you know, allergies. Yeah. You know, it's pretty crazy. It was, it's, so just the last three days, though, um, could be placebo, but there could be something. I definitely can feel it's like an instant thing, though, because, I mean, it goes right in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very little, like, probably the amount of the, I forgot, I don't know what that little white piece of the bottom part of your nail is. You know what I mean? I don't remember what it's called. The half moon of your nails, you know, of your thumbnail, that's essentially as much as you use. Um, it's got a weird little taste to it, but so some people might want to eat it with something. But it was crazy. It's crazy so far. That's yeah, awesome. That's pretty cool. Because I've like literally been religiously using Advil Cold. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like religiously. Yeah. <laughs> I, should try it. I should bring some. I, I can bring it. I'll yeah, bring it tomorrow. You can try it. Yeah. And if that would work, I mean, hey, that would solve one a whole bunch of issues because then you're not taking anything else. Exactly. I would much organic. rather not because I else? know I'm going to be stuck taking this for the next like yeah. month until this goes away. Yeah. Um, you're looking at driving out your inflammation. So it's, a, it's yeah, like basically like, like a mega dose of fish oil, mm -hmm. but fixing everything else in your system. Exactly. Yeah, it's, That's it's, crazy. I, I get, and I gotta, I'm going to do more research on the Rick Simpson oil specifics and see which CBD receptors and all that. Because that'd be cool. That, I, I'm definitely interested. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say one other thing on that. No, I guess that's it. Well, the funny thing about the cedar and stuff, one of my uh, clients and I were out we were working out by the rowers, and there's like these tufts of smoke coming over from by like Camp Bullis, and that was actually the cedar pods exploding. What? So it was, it was actually on the news. So I saw this happen over by UTSA after she told me what it was, and you're looking out there and you just see like like smoke. It was literally like something went off. Like so there's this like whoa, and we're looking at it, we're waiting for like fire trucks, we're waiting for something to go by because. You can just see it. It's out in the woods, like, and obviously you guys can't see what I'm pointing at. And couldn't even if we were on camera. But that spot in the back where like the deer feeders yes, are, yes. like a little bit beyond those deer feeders. Whoa. All we saw was like, whoa! And we're waiting. Like there was no sound that came with it or anything else. And we're like, we stopped the workout just to watch like what whatever was happening? about to happen. Nothing happened. When was this today? No, this was like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay. Um, so that then, was probably when it was really, really windy. It was super. Mm -hmm. Oh man! Yeah, and there was one day the, that it was you could awful. see the smoke in yeah. the hill country. Apparently, the cedar pods are so sensitive that when they get either hit by like a deer, like rubbing up against them or whatever, they just explode. Oh. They don't just like drop anything because in order to they spread pop. the cedar, they pop. And oh, because that makes sense. Is. They want to spread. Mm -hmm. That's their way of existing. Yeah. <laughs> so like those like the, the fungus pods that pop open. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. But cedar. And uh, so I saw it there, and then she told me what it was. And then as I was driving home one day, all around U the UTSA campus, like I feel bad for those kids because yeah, it was I'm like, there literally all day. <laughs> I, as I'm driving, I'm on six hundred forty. See it? Yeah. Whoa! Because I'm stuck in traffic and I'm nuts. looking over. Mother Nature you see, is crazy. Poof, insane. Poof, it was like a chain reaction too. Oh, that's nuts. It was horrible. So it doesn't surprise me that you guys are all jacked up. Like I guess the cedar doesn't bother. Yeah. Me. You're probably it depends. Like, like some people don't have the issue or that Do you have mold issues sensitive. or anything like that? I think I have mold issues. Okay. Like so when it starts getting damp, like I yeah. like I have like something here. It's not like it's like the raspiness, like I do you heard me talking in the meeting yesterday. Right. The cedar already goes like, That's why I'm a little raspy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same for me. I, have, like, I feel like a little froggy. Mm -hmm. But I'm, everything up here is good, everything everywhere else is good. It's just that little bit of something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so, dude. It's crazy. That's yeah. insane. So that was, yeah, that's where those little, if you ever see, like, smoke and there's no no one around, that's... How are you guys dealing with allergies? I'm doing really well. Surprising. But, like, okay, so, but when you do with, when you have to deal with mold, what do you rely on? Um, when I deal with mold, I actually get in the sauna for a little bit. That helps. Um, oh, the citrus cool. peels. Once I found that out last year, that yeah. was, because uh, I still remember Rave asking about, about that. The, like, yeah, even just when you pop it open, just, yeah. you can feel, I'm like... Well, it has the higher concentration of the, the antihistamines in it. And then the other thing that I did, that I've been doing just by default, is Ava likes eating sushi. And there's always that little bit of wasabi in the, in the thing. Wasa uh, the you snort wasabi. it? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> wasabi and the ginger. And um, it, I, told, I think I told you guys, I'm trying to, like, to not waste anything. So I'm trying to figure out a use for everything oh. that comes into the house. Mm -hmm. It's making Katie nuts. <laughs> I made, like, bone broth out of a chicken the other day just because it was there. Oh, mm -hmm. Heather did that the other day. Um, did you like it? Yeah. 
I, I, I liked it. Yeah. I actually really did like it. I like chicken bone broth. Yeah. yeah. I made it not long ago. You well, were making bone broth, I think, a few weeks ago? Oh, it's maybe? probably been like two months ago oh, now. Oh, wow, man. I didn't realize that. But, it yeah, it's delicious. It's good. Yeah. So. And then we uh, used the juices for the dog food. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'd give the cat some and, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And then just, so the sauna, to help kind of, what's that? Just to, just to dry everything out. Warm everything up? Okay. Um, oh, okay. Plus, when it starts getting a little bit drier, it's easier to, I mean, it's kind of gross, but if you oh, have to cough it up. Clean out your mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because a lot of times... Because once it's out, dry, it's out. Yeah. Like, once you... Yeah, that's true. But sometimes it, it takes that, and you'll... I mean, it's, it's the, And it's the worst in the morning. I know. I, that's night. why I've been Tony, taking you want so much. Keep it. Oh, no, I'm good. Okay. That's why I've been taking so much of the Advil Cold Insiders. No, I'm just yeah, oh, I'm just watching it, you it's take wrong, it apart. It's wrong my attention. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like a cat's tail. It's like, That's you're sort of looking at the tail, you're like, oh, what's that? And then you get eaten by the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Look this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how magicians do it. That's exactly right. Yeah. So that's why as, as your fingers are going, I'm like, oh, I distract Heather like that all the time. When I like want to pray a prank on her, I'm like doing something over here, and I'm like, she doesn't realize it. It's so funny. <laughs> funny. But she's also very very gullible. She cries, she? She cries no, in meetings. And like, <laughs> oh, I heard. Oh yeah. <laughs> you weren't there. That's no, right. Everyone cried in that meeting. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Like, all, and he'd look around all the, all the way in the meeting room. Because she's so um, so empathetic. And that's where Zared gets all his like mm-hmm. genuineness, and you know, he's a great kid, right? That's, that's all her. That's good. Because she cries for everything. It's she, hilarious. She well, not I mean, but you know, yeah. she's so sensitive. She's like, hey, she's like, I remember when I met Valentina, and like, it, like, and she didn't <laughs> say anything yet. She's like, I remember when I met, and she started tearing up, and I'm like, <laughs> I looked over you at one point, and you're just, I'm like, oh, oh my no. god, girl, because like, I knew it was coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, and here we go. Yeah, it's like, oh, as soon as the question was asked, you're like, oh, I don't think I get to add there at some point. I can't. <laughs> oh, I can't. no. So. Um, I guess something that I, I do, I try to avoid the uh, the Benadryl, mm-hmm. but that's the one that works the best. I put mm-hmm. Benadryl, and I'm like, solid. Yeah. Um, but, of course, then I wake up super, like, dry mouth, and like it's bad in the morning. Um, I diffuse different essential oils but if i can i try to make sure it's thieves or like like a lavender or something mm-hmm. um i started just using cedar wood um because i figured cedar cedar wood <laughs> i don't know there was a it's i thought it was helping but yeah. I, all the essential oils help when you first smell them because it just kind of mm-hmm. gets in your nose um and then we just did a deep cleaning because mm-hmm. when we were indoors i was we were fine but the no. dogs kept bringing it in too so i kept like brushing them stupid dogs yeah <laughs> I kept brushing them um yeah that was the biggest one leave your pollen outside aside from your copious amounts of Edible like, and sinus yeah, um fruits and veggies obviously we yeah. Have, honestly yeah. yeah I mean I've been pretty much trying to maintain my multivitamin intake trying to make sure that everything is uh you know where it needs to be for that um but honestly this has been my worst year for allergies I usually don't take anything for allergies. I usually don't ever take a an allergy pill. Like this is my first year actually having to take an allergy pill every day. Yeah. Um, I will usually do like a Advil cold and sinus, or if my if it's just my sinus pressure, I'll do the um, Alka Seltzer cold and sinus because that will relieve my sinus pressure because my sinus really? pressure gets so bad it's the only thing that works really fast to get rid of my sinus okay. pressure because my sinus pressure will get so bad that my entire upper jaw will ache and so what happens when your sinuses swell is it pushes against all the nerves that are all in your teeth Whoa. and so it makes your mouth hurt and so for me my biggest thing is just staying on top of making sure I don't have sinus pressure and so there has been some mornings where I've woken up and my mouth is starting to ache. And I'm like, okay, I need to take something now because it's if I don't, then I'm going to get a migraine. And then if once oh. I get my migraine, the rest of my day is done. Like, I can't, I won't be able to function. And so for, honestly, since cedar's been really high, I've just been trying to stay on top of not letting my symptoms get worse. Yeah. Is kind of where I've been. So, and I feel like you can probably hear it because I feel like I don't sound... Yeah, I can. We can I don't feel like I just... sound the same, but... It's been helping. I mean, it's been working. I feel yeah. fine. I remember I did the, the nasal flush. Mm-hmm. I did that. Well, the neti was, pot? Yeah, that. I love that thing. Um, I did that, I guess, during the time of the cedar pods exploding. And because my client recommended it, and I was like, man, at this point, I'm trying anything. And that helped 
kind of alleviate most of the issues. Um, and you moved your arm in a dog. Oh, like, dude, Whoa. that's all. Uh-huh. Do- Aries is everywhere in Texas. He's even in Colorado. <laughs> it's dog hair everywhere. Yeah. One of my clients had uh, recommended the little nitty pod when I was living back in New York. And it, okay. was like, it, was, it was gross, but awesome at the same time because you get all the gunk out of your head. Um, I mean, I've heard some bad things about it. People don't use like distilled water or they're not using the yeah, same but thing. Oh, packs you can and get stuff. amoebas in your brain. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but but you can also them. just read the label and it tells you not to use anything. Yeah, else. you have to do those <laughs> As long as you follow the instructions, it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was that was exactly it. And it was like, you only use like two packets of saline and people use like four to six and they're like basically causing like ulcerative sort of burning in their sinuses. Yeah. But that goes back to like the Tide Pod thing. Yeah. Like, you don't need a Tide Pod. It says do not eat a Tide Pod, but people are eating Tide Pods. Well, yeah. Mm-mm. Which is not good for digestion. Just throw it out. Mm-hmm. That, that's definitely a bomb. Yeah. So, yeah. But now, so you're saying this is the worst uh, allergy year that you've had. I like yeah, where you're going. Yeah. Right this is the worst it's been. Yeah, then, I don't think I've ever had allergies quite this bad. I've also never paid attention to cedar levels. Mm-hmm. So it could just be that cedar levels are so through the roof this year. Um, because usually every year around cedar time, I get mild annoyances. Like, mm-hmm. get a little bit of congestion, a little bit of sinus pressure. Um, one day will be a little worse than the next, but it's nothing that I can't just function through. This has actually been like the worst in terms of like my eyes are itchy. I can feel it in my eyes. I can feel it when I sneeze. My uh, the roof of my mouth is itchy. Like just everything that is coming into contact yeah. with outside air is uncomfortable. Were you uh, you were going to school last year though, right? Um, last time? semester, but no, not this time. Stress. Yep. Yeah, probably stress related. I. Only thing oh, I would guarantee it. Right? Yeah, I would guarantee that that would have a big impact on how it's affecting nuts, me this year. Nuts. Because even if you were just... Maybe that's more so why my allergies have improved is because of the CBD mm-hmm. stuff that it does calming. with your, like, calming and stressing, like... So because, sure. I guess, there's no... I don't know. Yeah, that, that would be but we know how if we're stressed, then we're more, like, sensitive to any other stress. Yeah. For so, sure. Especially when Cedar's 10,000, yeah. or, oh you know, gosh. it was like 9,000 the last I checked, and that was like a few days ago. It's just, it's just, it's like crazy. crazy. Yeah. I just, I can't handle it. Like, I just, it's like I, I'll check it in the morning, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. Do I have to leave the house? I don't have to leave the house. I'm like, I don't want to. My mom is making fun of me. She's like, I bet you're just allergic to the cats. And I'm like, it's not the cats, because then I would be miserable all the time. Yeah. That would suck. Yes, I would cry. <laughs> So how do you feel uh, about the last detox compared to this detox? Because you're almost done with it. It's been two weeks. Yeah, today's my last day. Yeah, Yeah, today's my last day on the detox. Um, I am going to probably treat myself to a non-detox meal tonight. (laughs) Detox to retox, baby. (laughs) We'll talk about that next week, and we'll see how she feels. Yeah, (laughs) we'll see. How bad of a choice was that? Was that? Ooh, we'll see. Uh, It's probably mostly just going to be cheese. I've noticed that... Um, so starting from the beginning, I think the worst of this whole three weeks so far was my prep week. Um, I think the hardest was just having this mentality of, I can't have that. And my body's like, but I want it. Yeah. And I want it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't ever drink. I don't drink coffee. The coffee sounded like a great idea. Every single day I'm waking up and I'm like, I want coffee. And I'm like, I don't drink coffee. Why do you want coffee? And my body's like, I don't know. I can't have it, so I want it. I'm like, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. And so it was things like that. And so it was that whole week um, up until about Friday to Saturday. Saturday came around and I did have this. So this might just be a mentality thing. It could have been just my switch and wanting to be stop being negative. Because I was going about it, thinking about it through the prep week being like, I can't have this, I can't have this, I can't have this. And so when that day had come around, I was like, okay, just stop being so negative. Like, this is not negative. It's only two weeks. This is benefiting you. Think about how many vegetables you're going to be eating. Think about how much good food you're going to be eating. Think about how you're nourishing your body. And honestly, come the next day, I felt fantastic. Like, I wasn't craving anything anymore and honestly the biggest things for cravings was coffee that I don't drink I don't know why 
Um, and cheese, because I put cheese on everything. Like, I love cheese. I have cheese and crackers is, like, my favorite go-to snack. And so, for me, that was the hardest thing that first week of, like, not having cheese. And then, like, I felt fantastic come, like, that Saturday and Sunday before actually starting the shakes. And then the next two weeks, I felt great. Like, I went through, you know, everything. I mean, I had a mild issues here and there of easy. increasing the fiber intake that my body was like, uh, but... I mean, there wasn't anything that was terrible. Like, there was no terrible days. Like, I felt great. So that first week was fantastic. Um, my sister moved down. That's why I wasn't here last uh, okay. last Friday. But um, my sister came down, and I didn't get to meal prep. And I think that was very – that made this last week very, very difficult. Um, didn't get to meal prep, and so I, I did go hungry a couple so of fasted. times. <laughs> I did a lot of fasting. I did yeah. a lot of fasting just because I wanted to try to stick with it versus yeah. me just being like, just eat something. I'm like, no, I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. I have some fruit. Like when I was on campus, I'd get little fruit cups and stuff like that if I was hungry. Um, That's good. But it, I just didn't have my meals. I didn't have meals. And I think if I had meal prepped, that this last week would have gone as smoothly as the yeah. week before. Yeah. I never felt the cravings or anything like that. I was just hungry. And I think that was the hardest part. Um I did get a little cranky a couple of days because I was hungry. But, I, I mean, I knew what it was for and I knew why. Uh, but it wasn't any terms of, like, I need specific food. It was just yeah. like, I just need food. Like, <laughs> I need something to eat. And so that was hard. But, I, I mean, I know why and I know how to fix that. And so it's you have to meal prep. Um, you have to have something to go back to just because it is relatively restricting. Um, but, yeah, I think the whole thing, the hardest thing was probably cutting out cheese. Just because I like cheese. Because you use it so much. I just, I just, I mean, it's my go-to snack. Yeah. I enjoy it, and I know I don't have a sensitivity to dairy, so for me, it's like. Why not? My body's like, just eat it. It's fine. You're yeah. not. If I can hurt you, I'm like, stop. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> stop. <laughs> so these two weeks, it's just, yeah. And like, it's just two weeks. It's fine. That's cool. So. So the experience so. was better. Significantly the better. Okay. Significantly better. I feel great. I felt great the whole time. I mean, pretty much the whole time. Um. Yeah. So, I mean. I don't know. So I know when we did the, uh, the last one, you were talking about that aha moment, like where your body switches, and that that, that actually happened before. So kind of like we talked yeah. about, like you may not have that during, but you had it in the transition from the prep week to the start. Mm. So yeah. that, that, that click, it wasn't because of what was happening in the system. It was just the change of mindset. I think so. And, I, cool. and that yeah, was a what I big that's realization cool. for me is that it was entirely mindset. Like my good feeling was entirely switched when I kind of took a step back and told myself, stop being so darn negative. Yeah, stop being cool. so ugly. It's like your body was accepting of everything you were doing then. Yeah, that's and really I went about cool. it, and I took, and, and the thing was, is the nice thing is like, I'm thinking about the types of meals I got to eat, and it's all meals I like. It's all meals that I enjoy eating already, just with more vegetables, more nutrients, you know, it's, and that's really the, the thought process that I was yeah. trying to switch to is think about how you're nourishing your body. Think about the good you're doing to the your good, body. Bo- yeah, I like and that. And it really mm-hmm. was kind of like the next day that I was like, I feel fantastic. Mm-hmm. I feel great. That's and cool. I like was actually ready and excited. What was to the go best thing that felt the greatest? You know, was it the energy? Was it? Um, I think honestly, the best part about it was going these entire two weeks without any bloating. Without any bloating, without any uncomfortable intestinal That's issues, cool. I think that was the best part about it. That's neat. So yeah. we're talking about the negativity. We just did the education water seminar, thing. water seminar. Mm-hmm. So if you guys were listening to this, there is no video up to this point, but I'll put the pictures of how the the the, the heck was the name of the study. How water inter- interacts with basically oh, feelings yeah. and thoughts and Masaru emotions. Masaru Sakamoto. Yeah, and I'll put the link for that down below so you can actually see the video with cool. it. But to Stephanie's point, when you think about mindset, we talk about that a lot with our clients. Like just change, you know, I wasn't perfect to, okay, but I was better than last week. Yeah. Or I can't do this yet. Or I haven't been mm-hmm. able to figure out how to make this work. Exactly. Um, like we say, good enough mm-hmm. is good enough. Because I think, I think Stephanie kind of hit it when she, whether, whether you realize or not, you literally walked right into it. When you change your mindset behind what the task is, it makes the task easier. Mm-hmm. And it's not, 
I mean, that was probably the biggest thing with the last time. Yes, you had some internal stuff, some external stuff. Um, you and David going through it at the same time, not knowing, being restricted. I mean, all that just doesn't sound fun at all. Mm-hmm. But changing it to, oh, it's only two weeks, and I'm going to feel better afterwards. Yeah, knowing that there was a day go, that was, that's cool. I think that's what people should really, really do is have that talk with themselves before they do a detox or before they go on a, like, seriously life-changing, yep. you know, path. Because that's, and it was a real, like, you couldn't BS that talk at the beginning because you it wouldn't have been real, mm-hmm. right? You went through that like tough week. You're like, why are you being so negative? Like you had you, like called yourself out. So if we could like people listening, if you could call yourself out before you even start, like, hey, if you do this, know that this is the deadline, the benefits that Absolutely. it provides, right? All that. Then all of a sudden they might actually, you know, you can stick to it and have a better um, experience with it. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing. It really, I, I, I think it's so. Just your mindset. That's so. And cool. I really do. That's so. Looking cool. back on it, and it's like, and thinking about how I felt about it before the first yeah. time that I had done it, um, I was skeptical of the detox to begin with. Mm-hmm. I didn't really know what was going on. I didn't really understand it. Okay. And so, all I really knew going into it was, I'm about to have to cut out a whole bunch of food I like, mm-hmm. and. When I talk to clients and people, and they're like, well, I don't want to do that because that is, like, super restrictive. And it's, like, it's only two weeks. Those two weeks went by like that. No. Like, I have so much stuff to do every <laughs> single day. Meal prepping specifically to eat that way wasn't anything outside of the ordinary for meal prepping for me. It was just instead of corn in my, you know, chicken taco soup, I would, you know, put a little bit more carrots or, you know, something else, shredded carrots, things yeah. like that. You can make those changes and make it very easy to the point where you're still eating delicious food just within the lines of the detox. And the nice part about it is I'm like, it's only two weeks. I'm about to start adding cheese back in. I'm so excited. I'm going to start adding cheese back in, and then I'm going to start adding some of the other things like corn um, because corn is one of my, you know, favorite little vegetables, like little vegetables. Um, You know, I, I enjoy having that as an addition to like, you know, fajita bowls and things like that. So I'm excited to start adding those things back in. But there's some foods that I already know that I do have sensitivities to, like eggs. I know I have a sensitivity to eggs. So when I went through and cutting those out of my diet wasn't that hard because I already had. Yeah. So when I do go get around to adding those back in, I am going to pay special attention to how I feel because I know I already have a sensitivity to that. Yeah. How am I going to feel after you know going another two weeks without it? And so you know things like that. I mean, it's I still got you know a little bit you know, longer to go to finish wrapping it up completely. But, I mean, I'm excited now to see how I feel afterwards. Yeah. yeah but it, that comes out of, like, literally, literally all the mindset. Because, like, you know you have sensitivity, sensitivity to it. You've accepted it, and mm-hmm. you've moved beyond it. <clears throat> I think that's the biggest thing our clients have is they haven't either accepted the limitation or acknowledged the limitation. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay, I got it for two weeks. Oh, I already have an issue with this. But it goes back to why people don't do the food sensitivity testing. I don't want to know what may be holding mm-hmm. you back. You want to know what's holding you back because if this is still your goal, you need to know this. You need to look at this. You need to be in tune with it. And then when you get your results, I don't want to take those foods out. Well, why not? It's going to be good for you to do it. Well, I don't want to. And then, of course, once we start having that, you have the reaction that you had, like the coffee mm-hmm. thing. I can't have it, so I want it. I want it more now. Exactly. <clears throat> in the opposite way. Which, like, blows my freaking <laughs> yeah, mind. That, because that I crazy. hate coffee. But that's crazy what the yeah. brain does. But that's that's anything. If I told you right now that you can't go home and pet your cats, you'd literally walk out of the room right now. I'm, I'm, you can't tell me not to. I'm going to go home and yeah. pet my cats. Yeah, I'm going to pet them all day now. Yeah, <laughs> even if you don't even like cats. Like, obviously, you like cats. But, like, if you if I said, hey, you can't play with spiders, I'm going to go get a spider. I'm going to get a spider right now. Yeah, I'm going to exactly. go find one. Yeah, it's just you know, crazy. It's just... And, but that's it. Everything that we tell our clients, and this is why we don't tell our clients they can't, but if you tell somebody they can't, it doesn't matter what it is, one of two things is going to happen. People tend to turn around and go, I'm going to prove you wrong. I mean, and it's very, very seldom that people turn around and they go, yeah, I can't. And even if they do, yeah, like five minutes later, like, like ever no. Happen. They're like, no, no yes, I, can. I can. Like, it, they may say it in front of you, but then they're like, no, I'm going to go do it. I'm going to go do it right now. Yeah. yeah. Sure, I can hold my breath for six hours. I'm going to go try it. <laughs> you physically can't do that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to be the yeah. first to try. How would you get that cut on your forehead? I may have passed out. When I was holding my breath. <laughs> then I woke up. <laughs> yeah, then, then I, woke then up. I got my breath back. <laughs> <laughs> then I was, was like, But yeah, yeah. The, the I can't, or you can't, not the I can't, the you can't. If you say I can't, you, you're right. But yeah. if someone tells you you can't, 
instantly they're wrong. Oh, no that makes that me, someone tells me I can't do something, I get real combative, like yeah. real fast. I'm like, oh, no, uh-uh. Like, <laughs> but it's human nature, and it's, yeah. it doesn't matter what the situation is. So reading that, and that's why they actually changed the brokerage on there to keep it minimized. Yeah. Because that it is a mental thing. It, it's all a mental game when it comes to changing your lifestyle. Because if you turn around and you say, I can't have tangerines anymore. Okay, tomorrow morning you're going to go, you're gonna walk to the fridge, automatically do it. But it's, it's a mandarin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're going to find a loophole. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not exactly what it was. Exactly. Um, but, that's, but that's it. It's just, it's a mindset thing from start to finish. And if you were to make well, yourself. Like the food sense, like you're right. To them, they might not even be feeling a sensitivity. They're like, no, this, I'm not even feeling anything when I have this. And we're like, but you should. Yeah. So then there, there's like, you can't have this. They're like, no, I'm going to. Yeah. Because I don't feel weird or bad whenever um, I have broccoli or cabbage. Mm -hmm. That was one of my last sensitivity tests. With somebody who can't have broccoli, cabbage, and he was like, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it because it's broccoli, cabbage, it's vegetables, it yeah. should be good. And it's like, okay. So it's Thanks. that psychological Exactly. Aspect. And I mean, telling someone that you can't have something, and it's, I think that's, it goes against what the brain wants to be able to do. The brain wants to be able to do whatever it wants, mm -hmm. and when you tell it you can't do something, you know, you yeah. do get that negative response. But understanding, and I think this is the biggest thing, um, one of my projects, which I sent you, I think the... Yeah. Did I send it to you? Yeah, you sent it to me. Okay. I, I, the, yeah, it was I remember good. thinking about like sending you my... Um, I, I'm doing a project in school right now. Um, we have to do a, a nutrition education project, and my choice and topic that I decided to um, go with is actually food sensitivities, because a lot of people don't know yeah. about food sensitivities. It's actually incredibly... Like, it's, it's scary yeah. that... And my mom, she swears, she's like, I don't believe that. She's like, I don't believe in sensitivities. I believe in allergies, but I don't believe in sensitivities. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I mean, there is... It's proven. It's, it's proven, <laughs> yeah. Where, I mean, the sensitivity, if you think about it in terms of, like, really simple terms, a, sensit a food sensitivity is a, is a stressor. Yes. That's a stressor on your body. That's going to cause stress. What happens when we get stressed? Inflammation happens. Yeah. And the body fights. The body fights it back. Exactly. And that's what it, yeah, exactly. And when inflammation happens, other bad things can happen to the body. So it's this long, you know, drawn out just sequence of events that can harm the body in the long run. So yes. if for a long yes. period of time you have these stressors in your gut, your gut isn't going to work the way that it's supposed to. You're going to stop absorbing nutrients like you need to. And that's why identifying those sensitivities are so important. Um, knowing what causes your body issues and removing them. And the nice thing is you don't have to, it's not a like super restrictive thing. You cut it out for a little while and maybe it's just because you were eating too much of it. Yeah. Same thing. You exercise too much. It's a stressor. Mm -hmm. You eat too much of the exact same food, your body's like, dude, give me a break. Yeah. And it's a stressor. And so cutting it out, even for you know three months or a month, your body's like, oh, hey, I know what that is. Oh, I like that now. Thanks. I can, yeah. it's, it's good. We can have those nutrients yeah. now. But sometimes you just Hey, you haven't visited in a while. Come in. Yeah. Come in. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And understanding that the reason why getting those sensitivities tested is so important is just to identify the stressors on your body and trying to reduce the it's amount stress of management. stress. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's stress management. Managing your stress. That's yeah. exactly right. It's, it's because obviously we, we can't manage your work stress unless you do quit and then it's like, cool, but who can do that? Very, very yeah, few people. Stress. <laughs> yeah, then you have financial stress. Yeah, then you're stressed about something else. Unless, right. you're, unless you're just wealthy, right? Because remember, remember that one lady who did it who worked yeah. with Cliff? Yeah, she was an example. Job. Yeah, I just quit her job completely. I was like, oh, obviously you're rich enough yeah, to do that. You and, can afford it. And still pay for training four days a week and all this and all that. Oh my gosh. Right. But, um, yeah, I totally forgot what I was going to say. What were we talking stress about? Management. Oh, the stress management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, That's I stress. Yeah. But, yeah, like people aren't, we can't get rid of your work stress, but we can manage your food stress. And, and people know not to have sugar. It's the same thing. Sugar is a sense that it's, it's inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And to you, spinach could also be inflammatory. Or dairy, or whey, or mm -hmm. gluten, or soy, right? Like for me, my, my biggest sensitivity was eggs. 
But I was eating eggs, like, all the time. I mean, like, I'd have eggs for breakfast. Mm -hmm. I'd have something with eggs in it for lunch. And I would probably have something with eggs in it for dinner. Like, wow, I was yeah. eating eggs all the time. All the time. Yeah. And then a mild sensitivity I had, because I was eating a lot of, like, sandwiches and breads and things like that, yeast came up as a very mm -hmm. mild sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And so, but I noticed that if I eat a sandwich, if I have one sandwich, like, every, you know, a couple of weeks, I feel fine. Because yeah. it's minimal with the eggs and it's minimal with the yeast. But if I straight up have eggs, like, if I have an egg sandwich, I don't feel good. Yeah. That's nuts. But I think... Back to Isaac's point about people not feeling that. If and I think this is something probably everyone can relate to. If you buy a new pair of shoes, you notice how like nice and soft they are. Even if you go try them on, you're like, oh, this feels good. This feels really amazing. And then you put that shoe that you were just wearing on. <laughs> you start noticing there's like grooves in the bottom of it. You're like, what is yeah. what is this? The shoe feels more rigid. Uh, it's just uh, easy shoes. Like, yeah, and you don't realize that until those things are gone. Like once they're gone, you have this like nice, clean digestive tract. You feel better. And then you put those things in, like you just said, things go wrong. Yeah. But because your body's built up all those antibodies to it and that negative reaction, you're not going to feel it until it's missing. Mm -hmm. And that's the same as like if you get in a new car. Well, it's a car. You, you, how many cars have you driven in? Or if somebody borrows your car and they adjust your seat by a couple inches, you're like... This feels wrong. Yeah. This, this, or the mirror? Yeah. Yeah. Like, what, why is it... And it never lines up right? You're like, uh -huh. it takes about a week for you to get used to where your car seat is now. <laughs> but it's it's... That's what people don't realize. This is their life. This is the, the, they live in those shoes. They live in that car seat. They live in whatever it is. So once you change it, you'll notice how it was impacting you. But until then, you won't notice it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about a bed. Like you don't think about beds being that complex. But if you have a mattress that you've had for more than what is it, eight years? Yeah. It's like it's all weird feeling. And then you go try out a new bed, or you go stay somewhere, and you're like, God, this bed is like, whoa, this was amazing. Yeah. I'm supposed to feel like this? Yeah. This is how. I'm <laughs> is this how I'm supposed to sleep? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and people don't, they get complacent. See, when we pick someone's posture, they're like, this feels weird. Yeah, but it's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. They're like, ah. Oh. That's mm -hmm. how you're supposed to be. Are you sure this is how you're yeah. yeah. sure that's how you're supposed to feel? <laughs> he's like, oh, look, he's asleep. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how good you feel. But, Sign the paper. Yeah. <laughs> Take my hand. But you don't, you don't notice it. You don't yeah. think about it. You don't feel it because everyone feels normal. And this is, this is one of the most over, this is actually like, this word has become a pet peeve for me. Normal. Normal. Because you are going to feel normal, normal every single day because this is the body that you live in. Mm -hmm. And you're always going to feel that way until something changes. Then it's gonna you feel are like, the average for yeah. your body. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You are, you are That's normal. exactly right. That's true. That's, and then, the like norm that. for yeah. you is being bloated and uncomfortable, but I don't feel anything different. Well, you notice it when <laughs> you're, you're not bloated. bloated. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but it's like when you're not bloated and uncomfortable, wow. it's like when you get bloated and uncomfortable, you're like... Well, darn. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. Oh, I feel it. Man, what happened the other day? Yes. Oh, shoot. What happened? My stomach felt ginormous, yeah. man. Where did we eat? Um, it was so bad. I don't know where it was. I think it was at my parents' house. I ate something I knew I wasn't supposed to. Or, yeah, and I overdid it. Yeah. Like, I had a lot of food, and then I threw the, that one food piece of food. I don't remember. It was a few weeks ago. My stomach felt so bloated. I felt like yes. I was I felt like I was Joe yeah. Diaz. Yeah. Right? Like that. And I was just I mean my stomach was still the stomach. It was yeah. just felt like and it you was you feel huge. And I was like, Whoa, I haven't experienced that. Like like to yeah. this level before. And, and then I just <clears throat> <clears throat> I was trying yeah, to burp it out, man, just trying to move and walk and like just yeah, like just like massaging my stomach. It was so bad. Yeah. yeah. But that's but then again that for most people that's normal because they'll have a meal and they won't they won't have the isolation of oh it's this item in this meal is what did it it's oh well I eat dinner and that's what happens yeah. well yeah because you're eating you know, possibly like breads and pastas and um, a whole bunch of other things that could yeah. cause that mm -hmm. if you're eating twelve different things at once oh, it's hard to yeah. eliminate what those are because and we've talked about it before primitive man was supposed to eat one thing at a time. Or a few things at a time. Yeah. At the very least, like fruits and meat. <laughs> yeah, like you would find one or two things. You didn't have the option to have an apple, an orange, and a, a deer at the same time. Yeah. Because odds are... Up with, like, berries for dessert. Like, yeah. You can't do that. Because you, you, they don't grow together. Like, you'll find, an, you'll find apple trees, but you don't really find orange trees next to apple trees. Uh -huh. They can survive in different climates. Um, bananas. You can't find an apple and a banana in the same area unless it's a farm. And it just doesn't happen that way. So when you look at the spread of vegetables, the spread of foods, uh, even the diversity of meats, 
you're very seldom going to find like a deer and a boar and uh well, yeah. and, and even if you can only kill one. <laughs> yeah, because by then the other ones are gone. Yeah. Like, like you're not just running around and killing everything. Like, you can't kill a boar without the deer knowing and running, like, staying there and be like, okay, like, yeah. that doesn't count for us. We don't have to worry about them. Like, you're right. And then there was times, I like to use this example, too. I think you even said this. Um, when we're walking and we're chilling and you see, like, a half-eaten mm -hmm. deer that's been left for probably a week or so, and it's got, like, maggots. And mm -hmm. But you haven't eaten in two days, so you're going to go and just... So I watched this uh, documentary thing on um, people with strange... Oh. I wouldn't call it fetishes, okay. but, like, obsessions. Are you okay. talking about, like, my strange eating habits or maybe, whatever maybe show that's it is? Something it was, similar it was to on that. Netflix and this guy was talking about he I, I eats, know exactly what you're talking about. He's like he eats raw animals and he'll eat roadkill. Like he'll pull over the side of the road, he'll find like a rabbit and he'll like take it even if it's got maggots on it. He's like it's not the best tasting thing, but he'll eat it. He hasn't eaten cooked meat in two years. Wow. And then I remember watching And he's some... fine he's, all, all intents and purposes, he looks fine. He says he doesn't have any health issues. Um, like, and it, it, they're, they're showing it, and he's literally cutting up, like, parts of meat and just eating it right there. Like, it's raw. Like, there's no, there's no faking that it's, it's, it's raw. But, I mean, and of course, it's always, it, potentially, it's, it could be staged, potentially it could be something different than what it is. Yeah. Um, but it, it's feasible that you would have come across food, and you would have found it and eaten it. I'm not saying that that's a real thing but I mean yeah. this guy was literally he's like that's what I do um and that's not yeah, he, yeah. He, he calls like himself like you're gonna take it and cook it yeah right cause we didn't I don't know like we probably weren't eating raw meat as humans you probably didn't you probably would've though cause think about this I, well that's true because there are tri there yeah. are tribes that were like or groups or areas of the world where you, that's all you had was meat yeah. access and or fish access. If, well, if, we definitely know you can have fish raw. If fish we don't know how to make fire or if we don't have access to fire or if things are wet, we're not going to just not eat for three or four days because or, we can't cook it. That's not so. That'd be something, though. Yeah. Dude, that's where I, I would love to, like, have time yeah, machine dude. access. Yeah, I saw. Or, like, just be able to, like, have some type of cool technology to just be able to ask a question and know, yeah. <laughs> which is bad, right? But, like, just go back and just be like, live during that time for, like, a solid six months just, just to, see. To, to be like, man. And, and of course, no no dangers of dying or anything, because I don't want, I want to come back. Yeah, I want to come I just want to, like, observe. Uh, like, a uh, kind of like, trail like, yeah. like, like played in, like, middle school. <laughs> died yeah. 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 <laughs> but, like, you know, just, like, being able to observe it, like, watch a tribe from, like, the, you know what I mean? Yeah, just like hover And just see how watch. they did it. Like, did they eat the raw meat? Um, did they take it back? Like, did they know how to cook the meat? Like, when did we start using fire? When did that tribe start using fire? Like, that's cool. That would be cool. very neat so to, cool. like, find it. That would yeah. be cool. Yeah, or to find somebody who studies that and bring them on here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure there's, there's got to be But you're right. We, we had to have, like, if that's all there was. Yeah. Because you have, I mean, think about fish. I mean, that's who who who's the first person to reach in the water and pull out a fish and said, "Hey, let me go cook this." Yeah, I'm sure because we already know. Like, if you look at fish, they probably eyes, saw bears eating it raw. They're like, "Yeah, ugh, ugh. well, what if we skin it? Well, that's better." But would they have skinned it? Because like, think about it? all the antioxidants that are in there. Um, the vitamins that are actually in the scales of the fish. That's true. Because you're actually supposed to give like fish skin, salmon skins to dogs because it helps their coat, helps that's their true. joints, helps you're their right. There's still benefits in that. So let me think about the everything pills. is usable. We, we, yeah. Everything's usable. You, if you're a starving animal or a person or a starving mm -hmm. anything, you're not gonna you're not gonna be selected with what you're eating. And then if you think about like the hierarchy of the of the group. You may have been... You left, got left the scraps. And, and, what, and what would the scraps have been? Because when you think about it, like, uh, if you look at, like, brain meat, organ meat, it's very high in vitamins and minerals, and it's very, it's good for you. It may not taste the best, mm -hmm. but it's really, really good for you. So the scraps of meat may have been the other stuff. Yeah. You know, what we think is, like, the good stuff, people may have been eating the, the, the brain, the liver, the kidneys, the intestines. Well, there was probably, because we know how 
you know, as, as humans, we like to, like, the spirituality and religion. And, like, there was probably that spiritual, like, give me the heart. Mm -hmm. Arr, like, that was, was, we've seen movies and, yeah. and like, you know, like, there's definitely stuff like that. They, they talk and the about brain that with, um, or the testicles yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Rocky Mountain Oysters, though. Is that what? what it, yeah, those are bull, are, yeah. bull testicles. Oh, that's what that is? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Man, so we obviously do that. <laughs> and they, but when you think about it, there's there's a history of it in, I think it's like the Aztecs used to, I think, I think they would sacrifice somebody and like eat their heart. Yeah. Because yeah. you were taking on that person's energy. Like that was your way of paying homage to that person for giving up their life for the sun to rise. Yeah. So I, maybe they cooked the heart, but they didn't. But I mean, it's. We're some, we were, we're some crazy people. Yeah. For sure. Like we definitely would eat raw meat. Yeah. I mean, well, we, there's people who eat people. Yeah. So we're definitely eating raw meat. Like, we're doing whatever it takes to, to survive. It's survival. That's nuts, man. That's, I mean, that's the crazy Same. part of it because yeah. you're going to do what you got to do. And I think we became so cultured and civilized that, well, actually, you said it. Think about it. When you cook food, it becomes an invader in your system if it's not cooked yes. properly. Yeah. So if it's an invader once I've cooked it, yeah. why would I have ever cooked it? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, I'm not willing to put this to the test. I mean, but I mean, we know that. <laughs> I like you, me some cooked meat. But if yeah. you, don't cook the, you don't cook the raw veggie or the veggies. veggies yeah. I mean, that's just obvious benefits there. You're right. That's crazy. Because I know. But then there's more. There's. Yeah. See, but there's benefits in both in both yes. situations. When you look at like you tomatoes, because <laughs> um, like there's when you eat tomatoes raw, you get different nutrients than when you cook them. Yeah. And so you actually get, I think. I don't know which nutrient it is when you cook tomatoes. I know when you cook tomatoes, there's something different about um, the phytochemicals, and I don't remember well, yeah. exactly what it was, but it changes. It changes, and it's Even different. Even the calorie you get availability. Different, uh, stuff from that. And so and a lot of people are, you know, when it comes to cooking vegetables, like steaming vegetables, you do lose nutrients because some of that is leached out of the, um, like broccoli, for example. It is leached out of broccoli, but if you're going to cook vegetables and if you're going to cook them in one big meal, like I made... I made uh, Chili. Mm -hmm. Everything got cooked in the same pot. I'm using the same juice. Everything is You're getting still eaten. Put that back so in. all that nutrients that yeah. might have been leached out of whatever it is is still in the dish itself because I'm not getting yeah. rid of any of the juices. So um, when it comes to that and cooking as far as nutrient loss or anything like that, it just depends on how it's cooked and how you're eating whatever it is that you're cooking. Yeah. And some, like, literally, as you start saying cooking, like, if you eat your steak rare meat or, or like, black and blue, where they just cook the outside of it, you're eating raw meat. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, it, at that point, it just clicked. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember, yeah. um, remember the first time I ordered a black and blue steak, it was basically peppered and then seared on one side and seared on the other side, and I cut it in half, and it was, like, this dark purple meat, and it was, like, still cool in the center. So all they did was, like, basically heat the outsides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So at that yeah. point, like, that's... Probably a minute and a minute, boom. It's yeah. Right. So it's... It's raw meat. Yeah. There was yeah. no... Yeah. The only reason why, I mean, when it comes down to having, like, with food safety and things like that, um, just because it's it's a lot harder to consume stuff like that now just because of processing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. If yeah, you definitely. were to be, you know, butchering and, you know, doing all of that stuff on your own, that's a lot different than consuming, you know, like... <laughs> processed meats but when it comes From to like or yeah. yeah but when it comes to steaks like the reason why you can have raw steaks is because nothing touches the inside and so when it comes down to let's say a filet um a uh what's the word i'm thinking of anyway just like a filet the steak filet mm -hmm. i can't think of what the cut of meat is right now um for some reason but i order it all the time and i don't know what it's called um but we're just got a little steak like little medallion like that's what we've got is a little steak um as long as nothing has been pierced as long as nothing from the outside of that raw meat getting into the inside of that raw meat you do not run the risk of getting sick because the bacteria on the outside that's why you still have to sear it i was about to ask is because next. even with the black and blue steak you can you sear it and it's, it's seared to exactly it cool. kills the bacteria that are on the outside but nothing pierced that steak to get any bacteria from the outside to the inside. That's why it's completely safe to have That's cool. a I raw like steak. That. I like that. You should not be consuming um, rare or medium rare burgers. Reason being is because when that meat is ground, every bit of that ground meat has touched bacteria. 
And so that ground meat on the inside of the burger has bacteria just like the outside of the burger. It's no longer safe. I love that you said that. That's And so that's one of the big things. Yay, I am learning things in school. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Food safety. And so... (laughs) But, and that's why it's okay to consume those things. But there are steaks, um, cheaper cuts of steaks that are machine tenderized, which means thousands of tiny needles are piercing through the steak. Yeah, 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 yeah. That steak is no longer safe to consume rare. You want to fully cook it. You, you, ha- you should fully mm. cook that. Now, there's always the rare possibility Dude, that... How many people are buying tenderized steak? Mechanically... If it says it's mechanically tenderized... Oh, that's happening a lot, I bet. Yeah. yeah if it's mechanically we, we tenderized, m- m- lots but of little I, meat. I, I, every time I see meat, I see tenderized meat. Ten- I don't buy it, but I yeah. see pre-tenderized meat. I'd rather yeah. tenderize it myself. Yeah, I never... But, even. yeah, I've noticed that, and I'm like, ah, oh, but how many people are getting that? And then saying, oh, I like my steak medium rare. Yeah, because I've never yeah. actually... Or, yeah. Never when you go to before. restaurants, those um, those prime cuts of steak, that's oh, usually okay. Because those specific types of cuts of prime? steak... Yes. Okay. Um, so prime, the difference between prime choice um, and all of those those, those grades yeah. um, is the amount of fat marbling. That's literally oh, the only that's it. difference. Okay. Is that prime has a lot more distribution and marbling. There's a lot of marbling throughout the steak. It's going to be more flavorful. It's also going to be more tender because it has more fat throughout yeah. the steak. Mm-hmm. Going down into choice, which is typically what you're going to be able to find in grocery stores and things like that. Uh, prime is typically like restaurant grade. That's yeah. that's usually sold to um, those kinds of places. Choice you can buy at H E B. Um, just slightly less marbling, not as uh, prevalent throughout less the meat, flavorful. but it's still pretty tender. Makes and sense, then of course it's got, the lower it's got cuts. less fat. Fat's got all the flavor. Exactly, and then the lower cuts have less, and so that's how that's that's literally the only like determination for those grades is the marbling and the fat in those in those steaks. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, usually the ones that if it's a if it's a good cut of meat that's tender naturally, like sirloin and, and tenderloin and things yeah. like that those naturally they usually are never going to be like mechanically tenderized or yeah. anything like that because naturally they have that's enough true. fat I've going that. through that's true you don't need to tenderize them but if you're looking at like flank steak and things like that you that see it. Being, <laughs> it has to be tenderized yeah. because it's a tough cut of meat got you and so it just depends and that's why some things are safe to eat just seared because there is, there's no risk of contamination because none of that bacteria would have gotten inside the steak. Deer meat, venison, tough. Yeah. So that's why you have to fully cook it when you make Because I remember they were talking. I went somewhere, and they killed a deer. They were making burgers. And they were like, somebody said, I want my medium rare. And the guy who was cooking was like, nope, they're all, they all have to be fully cooked because it's such a tough meat. You want to like just mm-hmm. thoroughly cook it. I guess that was his reason behind it. And there's usually reasons for that, too. Like, you never, never want to eat pork raw because pork runs a high risk of tapeworms. Yeah. Um, That can happen with beef, too, but that is incredibly rare. Though, it's it's very rare for a tapeworm um, egg or larva or anything like that to get into the muscle of a cow, but it can happen. No. And so, really it's and truly, in it's just very, it's much more prevalent in pork. You know pork. what? Um, I was teaching a seminar before I came back to Lifetime, and we were talking about pork meats, and this lady brought up that she bought pork, and she got Coca-Cola and poured it over the co- uh, the pork. She saw this on a YouTube video. And oh, I all saw that, too. The, the tapeworms, is that what it was? Uh, it can be roundworm. It can so be any, it, yeah. Okay, just started coming out of the meat. I was like, whoa, I have really cut down my portions. Or yeah. We haven't been eating as much pork as we used to. I don't eat pork very often. Like once I a mean, week, I think. And even then, we sometimes like, we can manage to go once every two weeks. Or it's, it's crazy. We're really cutting back and doing more. I'm preferring beef, mm-hmm. um, but I, we do chicken every now and then, too, and stuff. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of chicken and beef. Um, I don't do very much pork. I do a lot of turkey as well. Um, I don't do much pork, Turkey, that's a, but it's just, I mean, I mean, my issue is just because, I mean, pork is, it's, I don't want to say it's a dirty animal, but I mean, it's a dirty animal, and that's, I have a hard so time So in question, that. people should just thoroughly cook their meat. Absolutely. Cool. That's kind of the takeaway. Yes, totally oh, excuse wrong. me. <laughs> we have time still, right? Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to touch on, like, the, the, sorry, <laughs> uh, touching on, like, 
the possibilities we were, we've been talking about food since I think that was a perfect yeah. topic to talk about. Um, the possibilities of people eating like numerous low grade and <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm so foods. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I had a client who had let's just name almonds, spinach, let, uh, lettuce, and yeast were all ones, mm-hmm. right? If he eats all that at once, that's terrible, mm-hmm. right? Um, like then that's people are doing that. Kind of want to let them know to be wary of if it's yeah. such a you can take by starting by taking one thing at a time, but it t- might turn out that they're all causing it because they were all eaten together. Well, that goes back to what you said one time when you described it, like little bombs going off in your intestines. Yeah. That's true. <clears throat> so if you have you know the spinach bomb, it's mm-hmm. a small little bomb. If you have let's say the broccoli bomb is a huge bomb, that's right. you had a spinach salad. And you followed up with a broccoli bomb. Well, you went from having this little bomb that went off to a friggin' nuclear bomb that goes yeah. off. And then you followed up with a bowl of ice cream. And dairy is one of your little bombs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you just destroyed your intestinal lining. That's you destroyed true. the bacteria in there. What, I guess, food sensitivities, what, mm-hmm. we should give them people some solutions towards food sensitivities. What supplements should we be using, they be using? Obviously, we wanted to get on a probiotic. Mm-hmm. Probiotic would definitely be good. Rotational diet. So if you're not willing to do a food sensitivity, if you're not willing to do um, <clears throat> some sort of testing to find out, start eliminating certain foods. Like if you notice you feel bloated when you have uh, a burger. Okay, so there's a lot of components in there. Let's just strip out those components. Let's get rid of the bread for a week. Let's get rid of the beef for a week. Let's get rid of the lettuce or ketchup or whatever you put on that burger. French fries if you're eating the fries with it. Yeah. Get or rid the of the tea you're drinking with yeah. it. Or soda. But you got to be, but that goes back to being aware of it and kind of identifying it. So yeah. you have to be willing to identify there's something wrong with that meal. That's not just how you are. So people turn around like, well, whenever I eat it, that's just how I process it. No, it's not normal. Mm-hmm. So look at it from a logic I think, standpoint. I think to kind of to touch on being aware, if you're not feeling as normal as you were yeah. before you ate the food, then some, there's a sensitivity happening. Mm-hmm. Right, if you're getting tired all of a sudden 20 minutes after eating, there's probably a sensitivity or something, bloatedness, gassiness, mm-hmm. your joints start to hurt. Like that's probably because something you ate. And that's step one is to be aware, right? Yeah. yeah. And the big thing there, like that's an awesome point. When you eat a meal, the only thing that should change in your body is that hunger. Yeah. You should go from being hungry to, to not satisfied. Hungry. And then, boom, energy stays the same. We go right back to what we're doing. Not That's overstuffed, exactly right. right? Not overstuffed, but not underfed. Yeah. Have not a good balance. The rest of it. I agree. <laughs> no, variety, I think that's fantastic. I a agree. A variety of foods. Yeah. Eating eating randomly. Not randomly, but eating uh, food, random foods. Yeah. Don't eat the same routine. That's mixing it up. Do some yeah, chili. Don't have a Mix up the beans fries in your every chili. single day. You like know. you, yeah, like you, like you kind of touched when you did your detox. You still kept some of your same recipes. Mm-hmm. You just substituted for the ones you had to mm-hmm. substitute for this, this item or ingredient for that recipe this week, and then another one the next week. And now you're also adding to your kind of your um, arsenary of foods. Mm-hmm. And that works too, because it's like when I would do um, like my batch cooking and stuff and my meal prepping, I would rotate my vegetables. So I would usually have beef or chicken or turkey. Uh, I mean, I guess I would rotate everything, but it would be beef, chicken, or turkey, um, and it'd be something relatively similar. It'd be, you know, some kind of starch, so whether it was pasta or um, potato or... Like a quinoa or something. Yeah, some grain usually, and then vegetables. And so I would do Brussels sprouts one week, and then the next week would be beets, and the next week would be carrots, and the next week would be... You know, and that way, one, the meals never really get boring. They're all relatively similar, yeah. so it's super easy to just, like, streamline and make that happen. But it's always something different, so it's never really boring. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and you could always mix and match. Like, my favorite is, like, beets and carrots, like, roasted beets and carrots together. Like, so good. And that's such a beautiful color. Yeah. It's so good for you. And so, I mean. Yeah, red and orange. That's, you know. That's really good stuff. Rotating that and just, I mean, and trying new stuff. Like, the first time I tried beets was probably middle of last year, towards the end of last year. And, um. I've discovered, like, I loved them. My mom was like, well, I've always heard, not tried, I've always heard that they taste really, like, dirty, like, earthy. I was like, no, they're super crazy sweet. Yeah, they are. Like, they're delicious. Too sweet for me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I loved it. I thought it was yeah. so good. It was so nice, paired with that kind of, like, earthiness. They were the better carrots. than I thought they were going to be. Yeah. I was like, oh, but I hate this. And Heather gave me some, and I'm like, 
I'm like, oh, wow, this is good. And then after the fourth or fifth spoon, I was like, oh, this is sweet. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, And I like, well, I mean, for me, no I like place. to roast them because I feel like it brings out that sweetness because mm. I like having that little yeah. bit of sweetness. Um, that goes, goes good with meat, though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and I usually would pair it with, like, grilled chicken yeah. um, and then, like, brown rice or black rice and, you know, with avocado and all of that. And it's, but I, I don't know, to me, paired with the carrots because I feel like carrots are really earthy. Yeah. And so it was, I don't know, I, I, I like really love the again, combination. But, again, there goes something to be said about going with your your gut. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like uh, something that you like that attracts you to the beets and the carrots. Mm-hmm. It's probably your body telling you. I'm, I'm a huge, like when I eat salami, mm-hmm. sometimes I'm biting it two, three bites in, and I'm like, not that it doesn't taste good, because I've yeah. liked salami before. I've loved salami and cheese. And there's like two, three bites where like something in here goes, mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I go, I don't even, I'm not going to finish it. What's the point? Like, yeah. I don't care about wasting 25 cents of salami. Mm-hmm. And I'll just spit it out, and immediately it's like, oh, man. There's Italian seasoning does not fit with me. Fennel and anything in the salon, like stuff like that, yeah. does not work with me. And I and I can feel it instantly. It's like my body, my brain, something saying, "Dude, if you eat this, this is bad." And I wonder if some people skip that. I think a lot of people skip that because I've had that situation too, where wow. it's like some foods, um, where I've I've actually started to pay attention to, like with pizza. I love pizza. I think pizza's just delicious. But there's sometimes like. Maybe we've had pizza too much, and I'll go to take a bite, and I'm like, I'm yes. just not having it. Yes. Like, and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna maybe eat a salad or something, just because I'm not. What did I? How it's did like I say it's it not last quenching, time? Like, like as if water was quenching when you're thirsty. When I was explaining, oh, like it tastes like sadness. Like, uh, there you <laughs> like, go. That's a good. You know, yeah. And it's yeah. like when I go to eat that, like I'm not satisfied. I'm eating it because it's there, mm-hmm. but I'm like, yeah. with me, like Brussels I hate sprouts. I crave Brussels sprouts. Like, I love roasted Brussels. I love roasted, like, vegetables in general, obviously, because I feel like that's the only way I cook my vegetables. But, like, roasted Brussels sprouts, I crave. Like, um, like three or four weeks ago, we are going through H-E-B, and I saw a bag of Brussels sprouts, and it was, like, immediately my mouth started watering, and I was like, ooh, that sounds good. So I went home and made, like, a whole thing of Brussels sprouts, and, like, pretty much that's all I ate because I was like, that sounded so good. Like, one, obviously, if my mouth is watering because I'm looking at Brussels sprouts, there's the yeah. nutrients in that that my body's like, you need. Yes. I love that. It's yes. good. It makes me feel good. Eat that. Mm-hmm. So, one, that's like, all right, cool. I need to be able to, I need to have that because I need to eat that. My body needs it. But then to go and continue to crave that, like, it's stunning to me that I can crave vegetables when years before yeah. I would crave crap. Like, I'd crave so much other stuff that it's just amazing when your body learns how to function properly yeah. and what helps it function properly the foods that you crave it is amazing you know what something else i noticed the other day um i love granola mm-hmm. if we go through the healthy living and we got the granola that's where i put in my super shakes and sometimes um when i'm being bad I'll, I'll snack on that right maybe right before i'm about to start cooking or something and i noticed like after one just one little tiny handful right I eat it, I'm no longer hungry for food, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, I just want that sweet. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that's crazy. Grab mm-hmm. some water, swig it out, like drink water. Like I drink a, and then boom, back to being hungry with, for food again. Mm-hmm. But it's like, again, people probably snack on that little sweet thing right before dinner and then they're like, oh, I don't want that, it's not appealing. Because how many times do we hear like, they're like, oh, I snack on some chocolate or something sweet before dinner and then I'm not hungry. Because yeah. mm-hmm. you're just not satisfying. Because then it's sadness whenever you have the real food when you're expecting the carby, happy yeah. feeling, the dopamine yep. release from the carbs that you eat. That's exactly right. But that goes back to... And the water kind of negated that. The water was like, not stupid, you need to eat. <laughs> not and stupid. The, like, the water is the buffer of like, you know, like all... 60% water, baby. <laughs> well, there's the thing is that, you know, I, and this is something I actually have to work, I know I don't drink enough water. And it's not that I don't want to. I'm thirsty now now we're talking about water, but I don't have my water bottle with me because it's sitting on the counter because I left it at home. <laughs> um, but... I love water. It's, it's like, I go through phases where I drink a lot of water, water and then I don't. None of us have water. Yeah. I know, none of us have water right now. Um, but it's like, for me, I forget, like, I forget to drink water. And it's not that I'm not thirsty, it's because I'm not thirsty. Mm-hmm. And so, but then I go throughout my day and then I could get home. I'm like, whoa, I'm either really hungry right now or I'm really thirsty. And so it's like, I drink a whole boatload of water and I'm like, oh, I feel better. Yeah. Okay. 
bless your heart. All right. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I feel better. Not as hungry. And now I can focus on making dinner yeah. versus me being like snacking on everything yes. that's in the house. Yes. Because that's what I would do instead. And that's what people, they'll get home and they'll just associate thirst with hunger. Or they just walk by the piece of fruit first and they're like, oh, I'll eat this first. Mm -hmm. And then they have that and there's your blood sugar spike. Mm -hmm. and, or the roller coaster, the snowball of eating all the other crap. Yeah. And well, the other crap's always convenient too. You it's just always cook, convenient. There's no prep to it. It's always it's open, and then you're done. Yeah, it's easy. A simple yeah. pour, a simple open, a simple rip. Yeah, it's like pop tarts. I used to like live off of pop tarts. Mm -hmm. I loved pop tarts, mm -hmm. and it was just super easy. I wake up in the morning, pop it open, eat it on the way to class. Like back yeah. when I was getting my bachelor's degree, to, like go just eat it on the way to class. And it's like I bought, I didn't buy them. Actually, David bought them because he was using them as a uh, post workout. Yeah. So I'm like, well, that's that's fair. That's fine. You can have that for post workout, whatever. <laughs> but um, I had one, wow. and I was like, I put it that right back in the, and I gave it to him. I'm like, I'm not eating this. I was like, I can't. That's how I, I feel was like, it tastes chips, yeah. nasty. Like to me, I'm like, it tastes like nothing. How did I eat this before? It has no flavor. Yeah. It has no flavor. It's just sweet and it's sweet. It's one of those where you're like, mm -hmm. yeah. I'll be okay with spitting it out. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, it's like those things that, you know, all these foods that I used to live off of and function, you know, consuming. And that was what my sustenance was for the day. It's like I go back and I try those things and I'm like, how the heck yeah. did I eat these every day? Yeah, it's crazy. It shows the body, like, if you give that to your body, it's just going to say, hey, keep giving this. That's, that's yeah, it's shorter. easy. Your body's like, all right. Cool. Hey, man, I worked really well with that for three hours. Can you do that to me again? Yeah. <laughs> Every three, three hours. hours. Amazing. <laughs> Every three hours. But that's, I mean, that really comes down to it. But it's its knowing your body, listening to your body. And a lot of people are raised without the, with the idea that you don't necessarily have to chew your food, you just put it down. So it happens. So like what you said with the salami, it goes in your mouth and you, you associate right. the flavor. You don't even have I like enough flavor, time to associate And it's already through. Oh, and then so by right. the time it hits your guts, so you had the warning. But now we're going to make you feel nasty because we told you, basically, yeah. think about parents. I told you not to. Now it's your fault that this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. These are Done. the consequences. Yeah. But that's what happens in your system. You start chewing the food. Point. How many people don't chew? How so many times much. do we have this conversation? Well, you know, I start eating and next thing I realize everyone else is still eating and I'm done. Mm -hmm. And then how do you feel? Well, I feel bloaty. Well, something in there made you feel that way. And when you start <laughs> chewing, but when you start chewing. Chunks of protein food, that you didn't finish chewing. Yeah. yeah. They're this big. You start chewing it and you're like, I can't. Something doesn't taste right about this. Yes. And the moment something doesn't taste right, normally, like if you put some in your mouth, you put some it. to your nose, and it smells off or it tastes off, you just spit it out. Either you did a terrible job of cooking it, mm -hmm. or maybe you just shouldn't eat it because it's your body saying, hey, hey this that's is not, not good. For good. You. This is not good. Mm -hmm. Again, um, what was it? Protein at night. I'm really focusing on the eating slowly with my protein so I don't have to eat as much protein at night. Mm -hmm. um, so which that I have to do, I'm eating so much. Why when I get home yeah. from lunch and then I throw another shake in. Um, so, but I'm chewing so slowly so that way I can like, but then again, I'm chewing and I'm like, whoa, this takes a piece of steak, mm -hmm. thoroughly cooked steak, because um, it was thoroughly cooked. It was actually for lunch today. I laid it for leftovers right before I came. Um, yeah, it took me like, 30, 45 seconds to chew a piece that was like maybe an inch by an inch. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like, I'm starting to think of the finger thing. Yep. And I'm like, man, if that takes, so I'm like, I'm like, God damn, it's a little bit too big of a piece. Because mm -hmm. then all of a sudden your mouth is full with just steak mm -hmm. and, and sure enough. But I never got the feeling of this is nasty. Yeah. Or this is like unsettling. This is, yep. it's like the feeling when you're about to do something bad, mm -hmm. right? And you know you shouldn't do it and Ooh, you still do it. Yeah. It's like, it's like, that's your gut feeling saying don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. We have that with food too. It's just our clients, people listening need to listen to their body, right? Listen to yourself. It's that gut instinct, I guess. It like, really is. Just yeah. slow down. Yeah. Slow down. It's that eighth sense. Yeah. And we, we got you... seven now, official. Well, you know, I, was, I read something about that. There's actually like, what, 20 or something yeah. that they're saying, but yeah. seven officially, I think. They well, or have they increased it? I don't know if they've increased it, but there was it. We have five that we're supposed to Our have. Five normal. Five normal. And then, then you, you have like empathy and sympathy, and those all count as feelings and senses. Because oh. you can sense someone's mood. That's it's true. It's not really a sense, but like someone you walks in the room. up on the vibe. Yeah. yeah. The tension. You walk in the room, you're pissed off. It's like, I can sense that. Yeah. There's no, there's no, like, yeah, I, sometimes Sense. when clients walk up, you're like, God damn, they had a bad day. Like, yeah, it's like you, am I, am I going to be good after you tell me what happened to you? Yeah. I feel like, like, you better not take this shot on me, I'll kick your knees. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Put you on your ass. <laughs> We're doing uh, burpees. We're doing burpees all day. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's, 
people override what they feel based on their situation too. Because like we ask, oh no, I have to eat. Yeah. It's like, uh, and I mean, I've done it before. Well, I'll start eating, and I'll be like, no, I'm good. Like, I'll have, like, more of my vegetables, more of my salad, whatever else. Like, something wasn't cooked right with it. Just something doesn't taste and I'd rather, right. And I'd rather either leave it behind, take it home, give it to the dogs, whatever. But it's like... Oh, it happened in NOLA. Remember when we went to NOLA? Mm-hmm. We were watching the A&M game at that one yeah. uh, bar restaurant, and I ordered a big old thing, and not, I was starving. Yeah. And when I got there, I was like, oh, dude, this does not taste good mm-hmm. at all. And you guys were like, dude, why aren't you eating? I'm like, I just not. I mean, I had like three plates of food. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had the frog legs. Like, I had like all sorts of shit. I'm like, yeah. frog legs, I want to try this. Like, I, think, but, I don't even know what that is. But, I'm going to try it. You know also what I think it was? I never drink. Like, I don't yeah. drink. And we went to New Orleans, bachelor party. Like, I drank way more than I thought I would, like, that oh, I usually, I'm used to. So the next morning, my body's like, dude, what the heck are you doing? Or the next day. My body's like, don't eat any food. You feel like crap. No. You know, so everything, everything felt weird and unsettling. Oh, um, that's crazy. That's crazy. That was nuts. But that was one of the times I remember it happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys want to do a summary? Yeah, let's do a summary. Sweet. Yeah. So we started with... Let's start with allergies. Allergies. Kind of ways around the allergies. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, use use the things around you. Kind of be aware. So And it actually segued perfectly into the food sensitivities. Because yeah. the stresses in your bodies, whether it's food sensitivity, whether it's school stress, I'm pointing like they can see me, um, <laughs> <laughs> life stress, whatever it is. All those things are going to cause a, a negative reaction. And then, of course, if you're in an area where allergies are high, like the cedar pods exploding over here, you're going to get hit by something. So look at your stress, look at your environment, and just kind of be aware of it. And then this way you can kind of prevent it later on. Okay. It's, just part, it's just part of the whole preparation, mm-hmm. you know? Like you prepare your, your schedule for the day based off of cancellations and, you know, like moving things around. It's the same thing if there's... More allergies, incorporate this multivitamin or eat a little bit more fruits and veggies, you know, take advantage of the allegras of the, you know, that stuff as well. Um, what else do we talk about? Food sensitivities. Food sensitivities. Yeah. That's pretty much Biggest the rest drug. of it. That was it. That was allergies. huge. I think that was, dude, I'm so glad I recovered food sensitivities. Yeah. Naturally. Like, it just kind of rolled into that. And I think it'll help, too, because now if you have anyone who's on the fence about it, they can kind of hear about it and yeah. see what it is and how it helps. Yeah. Just kind of think everything you, your body takes in is a foreign substance, mm-hmm. um, specifically the food and uh, fruits, veggies, anything you eat, the body's going to attack it. And if you're constantly eating the same thing, it's like having that one cousin or uncle or aunt who just keeps coming in to the house without telling you they're coming or knocking and just opens the door because they naturally have a key all of a sudden. And, uh, and you're just like, all of a sudden you're not as excited to see them, you know, and then eventually that excited feeling turns into like, why, why are you here? Why don't you leave? You know, and, uh, or the friend, you know, any, anything. But so kind of the rotational diet, mm-hmm. um, what else? Rotational diet. Food safety. We talked a little bit about food safety. Oh, yeah, yeah. food well. safety. Eating all the raw foods and... You when in doubt, foods. just thoroughly cook out your meat. Yeah. yeah. If, especially if it's tenderized and stuff. But if you guys don't even want to, like, chance it, just cook it. Cook it thoroughly. Yeah. yeah. I made Dude, that was, burgers that was so cool that you night. brought that up. What else? You brought something else up, too. Right after with the food. It was, oh, the ground beef one. Ground beef. Oh, the, the ground burgers. beef. Yeah. Oh, people need to make sure that they do that. Because yeah, so many people get medium night, rare or they get... Just fully yeah. cook them. I mean, they taste, it tastes the same. Like, yeah. I mean... It's just not as juicy or like, but, but still, yeah. But throw I mean, some steak sauce on there. Figure it out. Drink some extra. Fine. I don't care, man. It's yeah. just don't get sick with it mad is, cow disease. It is a yeah. <laughs> it's a safe, it is like, a food safety thing, and it's yeah. It's crazy. And fascinating. there really they're shouldn't be. They're like, they're they're saying that most of these Alzheimer's and dementia diagnoses are actually mad cow disease. <laughs> They're what? just diagnosing them as dementia and Alzheimer's because they don't know that it's actually mad cow disease causing this. So they're saying that there, there's so many Americans, millions and millions of Americans out there with mad cow disease, but there's just, it's being shown, or not millions, I don't know, however many people there are who have dementia or showing signs of dementia or Alzheimer's, it's, they're saying it's because of that, actually. But it makes sense when you bring up the whole like food safety aspect of yeah. how many people are piercing their meats to check if it's thoroughly cooked, mm-hmm. right? Or like to let the seasonings get in or the juices and stuff. Whatever there weird so logic many people have. There's natural ways to to like tenderize meat. Um, enzymes, natural enzymes um, like uh, pineapple. It would have to be fresh pineapple because yeah. the bromelain. Yeah. 
Um, you can use that um, as a natural enzyme. There's other enzymes like papaya has one. There's a fun. There's one from mushrooms as well. Um, that's a natural enzyme that can. A lot of that stuff meat. comes cooked with steak. So yeah, if you if you ever think of um, like a marinade that you're going to put your meat in, it's usually going to have some kind of acid. Um, or some kind of enzyme, and that helps to tenderize the meat. So it does need to get in and so soak through. Pierce it. So you don't have to pierce it. Right. You can manually tenderize it with like a meat tenderizer. And then of yeah. course there's a the mechanical tenderize, uh, tenderization, which like actually it is needles, and it goes through. What it does is it breaks apart the fibers. Mm -hmm. And when you break apart those fibers, it's more tender. You're going to cut through it easier. Um, and so it's really just being aware of. How what those things mean and how that can mean for safety. Yeah, being aware versus being mindless. You know? Yeah. Awesome. So just be safe, cook your food. <laughs> That's, awesome. That's awesome. All right, guys, this is Nutrition Not Fiction. This yeah. is Stephanie. This is, this is Anthony. <laughs> and this is Isaac. We'll see you next week. Thank Rainbow you guys so much. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And I promise to have video next time. And I won't forget the battery for my camera at home <laughs> yes. next time. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs>